Um, I got vaccinated. You're saying I could get this? You delicious fries? Wait a minute. But there's also a, a burger element to this. She is a comedian, actress, writer, and returning champion. Please welcome Jenny Slate. Jenny, it's so good to see you. Cool. Hi, John. It's so good to see you, too. Thank you for having me. Let's get into it. What a week. On Monday, the FBI identified the group responsible for a ransomware attack that shut down a fuel pipeline that transports 2.5 million barrels of gasoline, heating oil, and jet fuel per day. A criminal gang of hackers called Darkside, believed to operate from Eastern Europe, took responsibility. This was obviously a shocking development. In America, the most common cause of stop pipes is OxyContin. Uh, that tends to be, uh, uh. you know, because y- you see. Uh. <laughs> you know stop it stops the pipes yeah yeah no i know i know i know i did know i heard that what can happen it's dark it's that's difficult you know yeah i agree i would, I would also say as a selfish as a selfish uh, joke monster myself i was all geared up to make a joke about how i wish someone would stop my gas pipes <laughs> right so i would say excuse moi I guess <laughs> you were gonna that, go. You're gonna you're gonna go the other way. I was saying, oh, we got to stop pipes problem. You're like, I got a pipes. I got pipes that need stopping. Yeah, I'm like, I wish a bunch of dorky people called that call themselves the dark side would just <laughs> put a cork in it and buy it. I I mean my cornhole. Come on, let's let's talk politics. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking politics. <laughs> By Wednesday, service had mostly been restored, though there may be lingering shortages after people in the southeast rushed to fill up their tanks and some gas stations ran out of gas. Not one to miss an opportunity to be a lying, repellent troll, Ted Cruz, the unacknowledged love child of Gozer the Gozerian and Walter Peck from Ghostbusters, Uh tweeted about the attack, Welcome to the Green New Deal. Well, can I also say... (laughs) First of all... Ted Cruz, you need to go to bed. And that's, that's, it's been years that I've been saying it. But secondly, um, if he were to say it in the cadence of that guy from Ghostbusters who has the Mm. weirdest cadence and he says, what is the magic word? What is the magic word? Right? That's what you're talking about, right? You bet. Walter Peck. Welcome to the Green New Deal like that and you'd be like it's not it's the green new deal it's like the emphasis is wrong that actor had such a um worm renaissance in that era he was in die hard uh he's in um the pelican brief totally he has a, a wonderful turn in the pelican brief and he's uh walter peck uh love also that era where the villain was from the epa I know, I know. You know, the only other weird, like we're like environmental, but we're bad or something thing, I think is from that movie, The Kingsmen, when for some reason it's like (laughs) Samuel L. Jackson, who clearly is saying all of his lines on like an earwig and has no (laughs) idea what the movie is about, is like (laughs) is like making everybody kill themselves, but because Mm -hmm. he likes the environment, is that? That movie had some third act problems. What you do you know? mean? Like the very end of the movie where the, the princess in jail is like, and now you duel me into bot. That's how the movie ends. <laughs> Speaking of butts, Ted yeah. Cruz is blaming. So Ted Cruz is blaming the fallout from one cyber attack on a proposal, the Green New Deal, that A, is not passed. B, would not have made this issue worse in any way. And C, would actually help by reducing our dependence on fossil fuels so that our economy is more resilient and less vulnerable to this kind of attack. But for Ted Cruz, the unacknowledged love child of Jack Torrance and the old woman in room 237 of the Overlook Hotel, reality is no longer a limiting factor in how huge an asshole he can be. The Green New Deal is now the Republican Babadook, a frightening, all-consuming metaphor for loss. So do you prefer thinking of Ted Cruz as the love child of Gozer the Gozerian uh, and Walter Peck or... Uh, Jack Torrance from The Shining and the old dead lady in room 237. You got to go with Gozer and Walter because they're not really that powerful. Like Gozer is, Walter just isn't. He's a nuisance and, and we're going to get rid of him. But Jack Torrance and the and that old lady who's all moldy and laughing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're actually doing something really powerful to me. And I, I can't let... Ted Cruz have that in mm-hmm. his heritage. Fair enough. 
Yeah. Fair enough. So, uh, Ted Cruz, the unacknowledged yeah. love child of the Grand High Witch and Bruno, the gluttonous boy in The Witches, was falsely blaming Democrats for an attack on the country. Republicans in the House at the same time were blaming Liz Cheney for calling attention to an attack on the country that they actually did support and encourage. Remaining silent and ignoring the lie emboldens the liar. Do you prefer thinking of Ted Cruz as the love child of Bruno uh, and uh, Angelica Houston? No, I still really am with Gozer and Walter, man. I just, um, Angelica Houston. Well, she's as a witch. Yeah, but she's always still Angelica Houston. Like That's she's Morticia Adams, but she's Angelica. Not that I know her. Like, I mean, I'm saying her first name as if, but I don't. I just. An you mean Angie? <laughs> oh, Ange? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so House Republicans voted to remove Liz Cheney from their leadership team over her refusal to go along with Donald Trump's election lies. And congratulations to her more on message replacement, a my pillow duct taped to a loaded gun. Oh no. <laughs> feathers. <laughs> I'm seeing lots of feathers. Oh. Oh. Feathers. 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 Just a few hours after ousting Cheney, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy said this, I don't think anybody is questioning the legitimacy of the presidential election. Uh, he's like a kid who reeks of weed going, I don't think anybody is smoking marijuana. I've never even heard of marijuana. How do you even spell that? It's so crazy how letters are just shapes, you know? Yeah. And then he's like, and sometimes you can like almost smell like the the sound of the letter. Do you know what I mean? And then it's like, okay, we know you did the dope. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, Kevin. We know you did the dope. We know Kev. it. Kev. 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 K dog. <laughs> we just want to talk to you, Kev. We know you're stoned on dope. Okay. <laughs> hey, Kevin. We're not. We're we're angry, but 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 don't worry. Just sit down. Come sit down. Come sit down and talk to us. Um, we need to talk to you for a little bit. I've doped up on doobies before. I I did it. I understand, but you know. We know you're high on dope. And honestly, we're more mad that you're lying to us. That's right. <laughs> oh, we're also really mad about the dope. We're mad about both. Yeah. Well, it was our dope, so. On Wednesday, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine announced a lottery program for people who have received at least one dose of the COVID vaccine in which every Wednesday for five weeks, a name will be drawn to receive $1 million. Meanwhile, anti-vaxxers will be holding a lottery of their own. The winner gets placed on a ventilator. But you have to, you know, you have to act. You have to get involved. Uh, you won't always get the ventilator. Right. Because of um, um, the fact that we didn't have enough at a time, you know, sometimes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, that's how that's going to shake out. We'll get $1 million and also their health and other people um, will have a, a sort of a big bummer on their hands, uh, either that they'll be on a ventilator or they'll have COVID and they won't be on a ventilator, which is a hard way to kind of go into the, to the late spring, early summer. It puts a damp damper on those summer plans, those beach plans, um, finally a chance to kind of relax, things calm down a little bit. Um, yeah. it does suck though. If you don't win the, the lottery, you'll have just gotten vaccinated for like no reason, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, right. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm in it for the money. Is, um, is how I feel about it. Even though I don't, I don't. That's, care. that's why you got Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson and Johnson. You got some, you got some AstraZeneca. You're just trying to get more tickets. Yeah, I just, uh, I just got them all, and, um, and then I asked my mom to get it so that I could get her tickets. Yeah, you even somehow managed to get that Russian one. It's uh, weird. Which is really, it's weird. That one makes you like techno music. That's one of the side <laughs> effects of that one. Makes you want to. <laughs> You know, really. Uh, well, you can't hear. I'm bopping. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm bopping. In other vaccination news, New York City Mayor and future Dancing with the Stars contestant who just makes the cut after Kim Guilfoyle backs out because an anchor slot opened up on Newsmax, talking about Bill de Blasio, ate a hamburger and french fries on television. Oh. Free fries when you get vaccinated? Um, I got vaccinated. You're saying I could get this? Oh, no. You delicious fries? Wait, Matt. But there's also a, a burger element to this. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? Oh, oh, after everything. How dare you do that? I can't, 
I sometimes, oh my gosh, sometimes I have to turn the radio off because of dry mouth noises. They really bum me out, okay? And <laughs> let me tell you something else. There's a person in my life who I love a lot, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I call her Nancy, my mother. I love her. Sometimes she talks with her mouth full and I just, I just can hardly... I can hardly stay alive. And for this man, that's privilege. You know what? It, you know what? That's patriarchy right there. It's like, oh, you're going to make us listen. It's not even about looking at it. It's actually how it sounds. It's um, it's really amazing, right? So this is ostensibly to promote the vaccination because you can, Shake Shack is saying you can get free fries if you get vaccinated. But yeah. that means that Bill de Blasio is taking three things we love, vaccines, Shake Shack and free food. And he's making them so unappealing. So bad. That was bad for Shake Shack. And like, what the hell? You don't have to see the person do the thing. Like condoms are great. I don't need to watch everyone have sex with them. <laughs> I definitely don't need to watch Bill de Blasio put one on to show me no. how it works. <laughs> no. Wow. That wasn't well thought out. That wasn't well thought <laughs> out. No, it's good. It's very good. I, the other thing is he eats french fries like he's never held one before. I, it's hard to explain, but he... he he picks up two, he holds them in parallel, and then inserts them both into his mouth. But it's it's a very strange gesture. And it reminded me of um, one time I went to a dinner uh, and there was a, a a famous actor there. Not a big deal. It happens all the time. And uh, won't, na won't name the name. But uh, he t in the conversation, as happens, there was a conversation about diet and exercise. He's a very fit, very healthy person who mentioned that it was their cheat day. And then after dinner, he ordered an ice cream sundae. And I will remember it for the rest of my life because he said it with a kind of pride and novelty, like he'd never said the words out loud before. Like, oh. I'll have an ice cream sundae. I'll have an ice cream. I'll have an ice cream sundae. Ice cream sundae. I think about it all the time. <laughs> like he could hardly say it because it was so fancy, special, rather maybe a bit, a bit naughty. Yes. And new. Sunday, Sunday, like Sunday, I, I, yeah. like for me, the the day of the week Sunday that ends with D A Y and ice cream Sunday that ends in I guess A E. Uh, yes. They're they're homophones, homonyms. Mm -hmm. They sound the same, but for him, it was Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> Does he um speak English as the first language that he learned? Absolutely. This was the only language. This was the only phrase he struggled with. <laughs> there was only. <laughs> <laughs> we're like um, a, a country where like vampires are from or something. Like, you know, he was like, <laughs> like that or, you know what I mean? Like had no. sort of an accent. No, I want to be clear. All right. I'm not doing an accent. All right. <laughs> don't come. I'm not. I don't know. It seemed like, well, it's really funny. Like my mom, gosh, why am I talking so much about my mom? But, um, like when she would say swears, she would say them in a British accent because they were like, like she'd be like, oh <laughs> shit. Like, well, I guess maybe she used to enunciate them, but she would always say like Doritos, like as if <laughs> like it's so bad and so fancy that you would say, you wouldn't say like Dorito, Dorito. the way that I say it. Dorito. If you Dorito. want a Dorito, you have to finish your flashcards. The fries, just to go mm -hmm. back. The only thing sort of more bonkers than that is like, I have a very clear memory of that documentary called Mitt about Mitt Romney mm -hmm. in which he's like in a hotel room and he's like, oh, he's talking about all the stuff that's really bumming him out. <laughs> 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 it's been years. And, um, and he has a plastic clamshell container of um, pasta and the top is clear and the bottom is black as they are. And he, as if, this is normal and we're not watching him do something like it's like it's like almost felt like I'm watching him do his grooming or something. He flipped it upside down and he mm -hmm. ate it out of the upside down part on camera. And I just remember being like, sir, that's not don't show us that. Don't show us that. Thank you. You're, you <laughs> the human side. Yeah. He goes sledding with his sons and they're like, what? <laughs> what a rush. <laughs> Speaking of meat, the Texas House passed a bill to ban plant-based foods that use the word meat or beef on their labels. 
the socialist vegans from California are trying to trick red-blooded Texas into eating this delicious plant-based meat, and they're not going to allow it. These fuckers think they can get away with slowly iterating on less environmentally harmful and more humane products that can, in years to come, help reduce meat consumption while sidestepping the challenge of convincing tens of millions of people to change their habits and give up food they love by creating a delicious alternative to food from slaughtered animals. Not on our watch. Mm-mm-mm. You better not, murder it. Not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> better murder it. You better murder it. I don't want these hippies clogging my gas line, if you know what I mean, right? To, to yeah. take it back to where we were yeah. just before, sort of. Hey, and it's great to be back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not only do they want the word meat removed from the label, Texas legislators are demanding that the word impossible only apply to actually impossible foods, like Ugh. a taco created by God so spicy, God can't eat it. Oh, oh, Lord, why did you do it? <laughs> Think about that. Wrap your head around that one. Why Puzzle did over that. do that? Wow. That this is um, really, I mean, not a joke, but um, not what we should be spending our time on right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I agree. Yeah. And you know what? One of them is better than the other. I'll say that mm-hmm. one of them is better than the other. I never know which one it is. Never know. But one of them is better, and one of them actually just tastes like a hamburger, and I love it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Fucking problem. Look, I've said it before. I'll say it again. The future is perfect steaks the size of full pizza boxes (laughs) coming out of a printer. All right? That's the future. I want you to imagine a beautiful ribeye that's four inches thick and a yard by a yard just coming off a printer. That could be, that could happen. Oh, that could God. happen. That's a beautiful thought. Just printing out that beef for me. <laughs> <laughs> printing out that beef for you. Hi, and I'm printing out the beef. Dinners, right. it's like, um, it's like Back to the Future Part 2. It's like, I is- I just want to say that. Fruit. Yes. Fruit. Coming, d- coming down from the sky. The, the pizza goes into the uh, hydrator. Yeah, tiny pizza. You know that um, I did not know until adulthood. Like I'm saying not even like, not even 20s adulthood. I'm talking about I did not know until I was in my 30s that Michael J. Fox also plays his sister. <laughs> had what? no idea. I did <laughs> not know. I did never, un- I didn't see it. I didn't make the connection. I didn't notice that it was Michael J. Fox and drag. Did not notice. Had no idea. I thought it was another actor. What uh, what what was it like when you finally realized? I it blew my fucking mind. It blew my mind. I was like, how have I seen this movie two dozen, three dozen times and just thought that that was an actor? Yeah. And why would you think that they would just place like a rando in there when everyone else is played by repeats? You well, know what I mean? <laughs> Because <laughs> that's a great question. That woman Thank was just really good at acting, right? That's what you thought. I, well, what I thought was, I, you know, it is a departure because it, usually Michael J. Fox goes up or down generations, but not across. You know, right. and I'm also getting jammed up because I'm thinking of how weird it is <laughs> in Back to the Future Three when Michael J. Fox is married to his mother in the past. He's. Wait. My he's the dad and she's the mom, and so oh that's God. always really weird to me because it's like, well, what what I happened to about Kristen that. Glover? You guys just gave up. Like, well, I think I think what happened to Kristen Glover is he tried to kick David Letterman, and they're like, we're not putting him in the third he one. He did. Oh yes, I there's some. <laughs> Kristen Kristen Glover had a media tour that did not go well for him, uh, <laughs> and I don't know what happened, but he's not in the third. It's weird that Michael J. Fox plays. Well, and then, right, he plays, like, the, the the relative from the past. And then Michael J. Fox is Clint Eastwood, of course. And they're, like, Mr. Eastwood, because they have old-fashioned accents. I guess they're tech, they're in some way Irish? Cause they're, yeah, they're, 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 like, Irish or Scottish. And I, yeah, I, yeah. I, you know. Speaking of, I don't know, Ellen DeGeneres? Speaking of Ellen DeGeneres... <laughs> She announced she will end her talk show after next year saying, as great as this show is and as fun as it is, it's just not a challenge anymore. Ellen continued, my staff starts crying the second I look at them. Sometimes they're already crying when I walk through the door. It just feels like I'm going through the motions. 
Uh, she just needs she she can't there's nothing to feed off of you know she, she needs to make them cry they can't be crying already when she gets there right what's the fun of that what's the challenge there's no sport in it there's no sport in it that's like yeah. it's like jurassic park like she wants to hunt you know yeah they're just goats being lowered in <laughs> the whole staff all of her PAs, all of her PAs every day, they just get lowered in. They're like, eh, <laughs> eh, eh. they're standing around and like, they're like, what, what? The door to her, the door to her dressing room is, is like, is like busted down. Oh my God. She's out of here. She's out of here. Ah! And then they, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I know what you mean. Yeah. I know. I know what you mean. Speaking of um, PAs, I did get a fight in a fight on the street with, um, couple of PAs from the Curb Your Enthusiasm production uh, this week. That did happen. <laughs> what so, happened? Why did you so... know that sounds like an episode of Curb? Sounds... It, so, so here's what happened. Um, my parents were in town, the Lovitz. Uh, I will say uh, before this meal took place, I had I had like uh, I had like two <laughs> two confrontations in the span of hours. One of them uh, did involve my father because he read something on the internet about Israel and then he said something to me about it being anti-Semitic, and that yeah. turned into a whole conversation that culminated in my mother uh, taking her uh, uh, headphones out because she was watching Netflix on her iPad. I think she's watching a drama about a small town doctor. Uh, it's oh. the kind of, she loves dramas about small town doctors. And she mm. just takes out her headphones out and she goes, are you done arguing about Israel so that we can go to dinner? And then she <laughs> just put them back in. And she put them back in. Uh, but then we went to dinner. And we, it was a, a Mexican restaurant. I dropped my parents off with actually with Ronan. And I said, I'll, you go, you just go get the table and I'll drive to park. And I go and I park. And as I'm parking, I realize that I've just passed by some kind of production. Don't know what it is. I park. I start walk, working, walking toward the restaurant. And then uh, a PA, somebody on the production just stops me and says, hey, can you hold off and not cross for a second? We're about to, uh, to shoot. And I said, sure. Love to support the industry in Los Angeles. Big believer. A lot of art. jobs, huge yeah. art, art, art. at yeah. this point, didn't even know what the production was. And so they're about to, to, to shoot and I sort of wait, no big deal. Uh, and then I look and I see Larry David standing there and I thought, oh, that's fun. This is a Curb Your Enthusiasm shoot. I got lots of friends that love Curb Your Enthusiasm. And while I've lived in LA a long time, I'm not jaded. I'm excited. And I yeah. thought, you know what? I'm going to take a quick pic on my phone, send it to my friends. I'm not looking to tweet. I'm not looking to make a kerfuffle out of it. Sure. And so without even thinking, I take out my phone, I just sort of grab a picture. And then somebody on the production just yells, no photos allowed. <laughs> and I, I was sort of like caught off guard. I was like, but I like looked around. I was like, but I'm on a, I, I'm not, I'm on a public street. I'm on a public street in Los Angeles. And then I was like, what do you mean? No photos allowed. Like, and she was, and then she's like, well, we don't want people spoiling the season. I was like, oh, I totally understand that. But you can't tell people it's not allowed. Like, I'm on a public street. I'm only standing here because you asked me to. And then, uh, and she said, like, well, it's no photos or something like that. And then another production person starts saying no photos at me. Something like that. I'm going to get into details later. I was like, what do you mean? You can't tell me not to take a picture. I'm on a public street. Picture, picture, picture. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, absolutely. And then and then they were like, well, keep moving then. It got across. Well, I said, I'm like, I'm only standing here because you told me to. I don't care about this. I wasn't coming here to take pictures. I'm not the paparazzi. Why are you yelling at me? I'm allowed to take pictures of public street. I'm only here because you asked me to, and I'm staying here to be nice. Now two people are walking me across the street, <laughs> and everybody's looking. And I, I think I got one more picture as I kept moving. And then I got to my parents, and I sat down, and I was so amped that I ate an entire bowl of chips. I just inhaled it. I was like, I can't believe the way they talked to me. I, just, so like, I wasn't even trying to do anything. They're like, I didn't come here to have a fight. I don't care about this. I'm a paparazzi. To chip, chip, chip. And then I tweeted the picture and I felt much better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, okay. Here's the two questions. One, that's why you ate the chips. <laughs> two, did you just, did you take a picture of yourself because you are actually Larry David? Because that is a full on David experience. <laughs> <laughs> was it just a lot of selfies of that's yourself? that's the thing that was so galling about it because like i i was absolutely in a curb episode standing up for the principle of being allowed to take pictures on a public street 
yeah. while Larry David was standing there shooting the episode. Uh, was the irony wasn't lost on me, if that's your question. Yeah, yeah. I'm reframing yeah. your question as was the irony lost on you? It was not. <laughs> uh, but it was very tense. I don't think there are any heroes in the story because I did yell something like, like, I, like, I think I yelled, so, I can't remember, but I, did, as they, as like two people were walking me away from the set, yeah. I did yell something like, I don't care about pictures. I don't give a shit. And that's what everybody, <laughs> that's what everybody stared at me. Oh, I don't care about pictures. Oh, something like that. Something like that. I mean, I'm sure they have some version of the audio picked up because again, it was pretty intimate and a lot of people turned. A lot yeah. of people turned. Uh, so anyway, that was um, Hollywood, you know? Hollywood, man. Hollywood. Also this week, and some sad news, Bo Obama, the Obama family's first dog at the White House, died. Uh, Major Biden is currently being held on $1 million bond. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> Sorry, no, no, no. Um, I can't... Uh, I can't, I can't do it, man. I can't stomach it. It's too sad. Oh, God. Oh, mm. God. Oh, Jesus. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't like that one. <laughs> In other, uh, oh, wait, we have to worry about that still? News. Fission reactions are increasing again at, at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine. Said Craig Mazin, cracking his knuckles, getting to work on Chernobyl season two. Oh. Series had a lot of buzz. HBO was pretty excited to, to get that reactor going again. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. I mean, is the right reaction? Oh, no. Sure. Yeah. Oh, God. Ugh. I'm just speechless. I just want, I just want one thing to stop. <laughs> Can we get one thing to stop? We just one get thing stop. One thing to stop. And like, you know what? Yeah. Wow. I really shouldn't have watched that. I think I watched that while I was pregnant. Wow. Could that have been? You wouldn't know. I, mean. I wouldn't know. I don't know exactly <laughs> yeah. when. I don't remember the air date or your pregnancy dates, and I don't know when they align. Let me tell you, John, my pregnancy began of, at your first week of uh, uh, the back in the closet. <laughs> so <laughs> is that what it's called? <laughs> Yes. Are you telling me that that you? Uh, I'm just trying to understand. Are you suggesting something was playing while no during, con no, during conception? Just before, weirdly. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, but that like I remember being like I'm pregnant, and then listening to your podcast, and it was like week one. Cool. Yeah, I'm it was like part oh, of that, that memory. Was, like I could always gauge my pregnancy by what week you guys were on. I'm not kidding. That's, that's cool. Not, that's what I was doing. In good news, here's some good news. <laughs> okay. On Thursday, the CDC announced that fully vaccinated people no longer need to wear masks in most situations, indoors and outdoors. Wow. We have all longed for this moment when we can get back to some sense of normalcy. Based on the continuing downward trajectory of cases, the scientific data on the performance of our vaccines and our understanding of how the virus spreads, that moment has come for those who are fully vaccinated. It's pretty great. I was really, that's really I was like moving. It's like, you know what? We It's where the moment has come. Yeah. There are exceptions. People need to know there are exceptions for healthcare settings, public transportation, but this is exciting. The mask is going to be, hopefully, hopefully, something we start to put aside because of the vaccinations. That's cool. It's really cool. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Like going to the supermarket and not wearing a mask. That also means that people are going to now see me be like, cilantro, 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 <laughs> and mumble to myself. <laughs> but worth it. I'm going to have to remember how to um, smile at strangers as opposed to what my mouth is doing now, which is kind of permanent. Is that what it was like under there? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little scowl, some... I got, I think I really furthered my kind of like um, happy eye crinkles by making sure that like everybody knew that I was smiling under my mask by like really, really, really smiling hard. Yeah, like um, like when uh, like like Andy Circus is doing uh, doing one of his um performances in the dots. In the dots, <laughs> you, yeah. You know when he's in the face dots and he's got to really yeah. ham it up to become a gorilla or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we've been doing in the mask, kind of like becoming becoming navi you know 
Yeah. Oh, major Navi vibes. I mean, the way I was with the mask, smiling under it, doing it. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you see someone and you make eye contact, you just do a little like, like a tight, like mm -hmm. a nice, like, hi, like a, a smile, you know, yeah. just like, rather than like staring blankly or looking away, just a little like, you know, here we are, <laughs> that kind of thing. I was like, that's what I do when I see people. I give them a little smile, but it it just never read. And that was so sad to me. And it also made me realize that, no joke, I do wave at my dog a lot without saying like hi or anything. And I she probably doesn't know what that is either. You know, so a lot, a lot that I've been getting wrong. Yeah, we all learned a lot in the past year, you know, about ourselves, about how to communicate with dogs, uh, yeah. how to communicate with other people. Sure. Um, I'm trying to smile with my eyes. I'm just going to try to. Is that it? Oh. I'm trying to not smile with my mouth. Smile my mouth. No. Nope. Can't do it. It looks more like you're like, oh, goo goo gaga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you don't notice it, but Jessica Rabbit, just re Jessica Rabbit just walked behind you. <laughs> I was going to say, like, yeah, it's not like, it's not like, oh, got like that, but it's more like, wow, 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 wow. Look at that big pile of marshmallows. <laughs> you know like like just something like soft and candy like i don't know i don't, I don't I think know. that's good. well and the good news is now we can eat those soft marshmallows or the coyote can eat that road run road runner yeah without their um, masks on. without their masks jenny slate it is always so good to see you this was so much fun thank you so much Believe it.